also wait for Ryzen ring back code while you're partying. Hello. Hey, Sarah, it's Sean. Hey. What are you doing? Um, I'm in my car about to have myself a cigarette and listening to... Ah, hell, I'll just turn that off, actually. I had my car... Scary. Um, she, uh... I haven't seen her. Um, she Where'd left... Where'd she go? I don't know. I, I haven't seen her since she left. I mean, it, she was passed out. I came out and checked on her, I think, two or three times. I brought her coffee and gave her everything, you know, I, I could to try to make her comfortable. Um, she disappeared. She did. I Well, alright. So, alcoholics on the streets don't usually leave their personal beverage container anywhere. Right. Um, and she also left her gloves. It's cold out. But, um... Right. She left my door on my vehicle partially open. See, she didn't. She didn't yeah. want to go inside of the she Starbucks. Just out. She She's an alcoholic. She didn't think about it. She just left. Yep. She panicked. Well, I, I was thinking since the alcohol bottle, she went to sleep clutching it to her chest, and when she woke yeah. up, you know, when I got to the vehicle, I found it on the floor. So she might have dropped it and not realized she dropped it. And gone looking for it, you know? Yeah, probably. <sighs> but is she at Jerry Uni before, or just that you just no, ha I, happened I, to save? It just so happened that I was driving by, and I saw her laying there face down, and I, I noticed nobody else seemed to even give a shit. Right. <laughs> I can't just leave somebody there and not call because sometimes by the time a first responder gets there, oh, it's too dead. late for anything, yeah. Yeah. And then a lot of times first responders will want to talk to them for too long out in the weather when they're in that condition. Depends on who the first responder is. Yeah. EMTs are, are pretty good about what they do. Um, they're trained specifically for saving lives, so I, I like them right. more than I like cops, for damn sure. And I try to like hey, cops. I don't know if you, I mean, I know we talked about this recently, but, like I said, I mean, you know, I had a hard time with the police, and then I went through what I went through, and then now I'm back to, I know our sheriff, I know everything about him he was my friend prior to becoming the sheriff but i what like i think i told you that like i you know that fucking bitch broke into my house but i gave her a place to live and then held my own gun to my head and the cops didn't do anything there's not even a police report on it and you know why because i have a warrant out of a county next door to us and they treated me like shit, and so I tried to back the police officers, but I really got fucked in that situation, and I had so many witnesses, and they made them all go away, and nothing happened with that, and, you know, I mean, Nick and I, we've never, you know, we've had eight kids, we've always fought for everything that we have, and for the first time, you know, we finally have the means to defend ourselves, so thank God for that. But, like, I wanted to believe in the police officers, but after that day, I couldn't. And it's just, like, I will say this. Like, here in Arizona, they do take care of the homeless, but it's a really, like, during the winter, it's not that bad. But in the, it gets, like... Colorado in the winters where people are dying of freezing here it's heat stroke and you have homeless people with yeah. children water. yeah and like Nick said we donate water and we and and anything toothbrushes toothpaste you know like all these things but you know until we started our own company like we were on food stamps we run it's called access which is Arizona cost containment health systems. It was like free insurance and you know 
But yeah, we used to get a tax return because we have all these kids, and now we don't. But every year, no matter what, we still donate it to all the funds. I, yeah, I don't... So when I see someone on the side of the road, I'll give them my food. But we don't give them money or anything anymore because I had a guy get us two years in a row with the same story. You know, like, oh, my wife needs her diabetic medication. And so I gave every penny that I had. And then a year later, I see him in the same spot saying the same story. And I'm like, what the fuck, you know? So here, winter, you can make it. You know what I mean? Like, you can get a, all you need is a sad little blanket and you're fine. It gets cold. The desert does get cold. Well, see, that, that's the sad thing about homelessness is that, you know, a lot of people do some really stupid stuff when they're desperate, and then all of us are judged for it. Like, I know a lot of people who, who say don't give anything to, you know, homeless people because of alcoholics or druggies or junkies yeah, hey, or whatever. If you show me a sign that says, I want money for beer, I'll give you, I will give you the money. But, yeah, See, I proved that. Beer. I proved that works with Nick's Desiree. Next with me. with but, Desiree. Yeah. Sorry. With Desiree, I, I tried to get uh, diapers with a sign. I was out there for about four hours. And finally, oh. I flipped it over and I, I wrote, Why lie? I need a beer. And people were giving me money. And it was an outright lie. I didn't need beer. I was legit after diapers. Hey, the best. The best sign we ever saw was when we lived in California, and the guy had a sign that said, "I'll bet you a quarter." Yeah, I'll bet you a quarter. You can't hit my sign or whatever. Sean, Sean, this is Nick. Yeah, I want to tell you, neither one of you two look old enough to have eight kids. Hey, I know. No, we do, but Sean, hey, listen. My wife has been a big supporter of you, man, and I just wanted to introduce myself. So. So I can say hi, pretty much. I like I, you. How you doing, friend? I'm, like, I'm fighting for the Constitution. I, I've, I've seen some of your videos, and when when I first was introduced to you by my wife via some of your videos, I had a really different. I had a yeah. really different outlook on who you are as a person. Because of Natalie, the post from Natalie. A lot some of people your angry did. Rants, man. But, Kind of put me on edge. They put my a lot wife, of people on my edge. My wife, your friend Sarah, my wife, is a is a kind hearted person, man. And she 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 showed me who you really are, man. And I have your back. I just want you to know that. Well, right now I'm trying to get it so that police officers all across America have to wear body cams. That way anything that we say to them is documented. They can't try to twist our words. Well, it's starting more and more. Even security guards on college campuses are wearing the body cams. And no, as well as us. So, um, one instance is I went to go get cigarettes. I, Nick called me as I was leaving, and I turned around, I went one street over, and I had to pee, so I popped out of my vehicle, I peed real quick, because I pee like nobody's business, it was by a park, I go home, I fall asleep, and a cop, one cop is knocking at our door, and he comes at Nick, and Nick's a big guy, no matter, poor Nick, and no matter, <laughs> so he's like you, he's bearded, he just looks like someone that you should just come at. So the police come at him so hard. So he opens the door, and it's a police officer coming at him hard. And they say, we need to talk to your wife. And Nick said, the fuck you do? Like, my wife's asleep. Right. And so he's like, I'll be damned if you wake her up. So the, the one cop's like, no, nope. you need to wake her up and you need to bring her out here. So he wakes me up, then I come out, and the cop says, Nick, you need to go away. And Nick says, fuck you, I'm not going away. I don't trust you guys. I, It's not going to be you versus her. And he's trying to talk me into admitting to See, that's what I needed. Admitting to a, a sexual offender. Yeah, being in public. And 
That's Welcome to Homeless fun. Life. And they said, well, we have a detective across the park that saw her pee, so huh? she, she's going to have to register as a sex offender. And I'm like, fuck you, motherfuckers. Yeah, that motherfucker had the nerve to say, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to get inside your house. And I said, I'm going to give you 29 seconds to fucking get off my property. Nice. So he was about to chase Nick, and I said, okay, I'll go out there. And the whole time, he tried to tell me that I was going to have to register as a sex offender because I peed by a park, and, you know, I, dr I drank and drove. Well, they never caught me. You know, I was asleep by the time they got back, and whatever. My friend happened to see some vehicle follow me, so they called me and said, I saw this vehicle follow you and whatever, so... I didn't admit to anything, but they tried so hard, and they were telling me that I was going to have to register as a sex offender, and Nick almost got teased, almost got the, the shit kicked out of him, but he was like, you have 30 seconds no with problem. my wife. No, they don't like Nick, and Nick is the sweetest, kindest person. Like, the person they should hate is me, because I was a cop, so I went from being a cop to now, I fucking hate you guys. And Nick's calm, and rational where I am not at all anymore and so but every time anything goes down they always they're like Nick and they separate him and they I mean he goes through just like you do he's just like you like he'll be doing absolutely nothing he'll have nothing to do with the situation and they have a taser on him and all this yeah, shit I, I, yep. we've, had, we've had 10 cops roll up on a party and I come out of the restroom, and nine of them put him on the ground me inside and make me sit down and like <laughs> go. Yeah, but nine of them I got one for you. But it was terrible because, like that night, yes, I popped out of my truck. I peed right beside it. I wasn't there. Was a park. There were no kids there. It was late at night. And they had no detective on me, but had I admitted to anything, I would have been registered as a sex offender. I would have gone to prison. And it was it's just, just, I mean, my first time ever, I went from being a police officer to my first time ever being in trouble. I was offered 45 days in jail for drinking two beers. Two beers and driving my friends home. Two beers in a, what, six, seven-hour period yeah. that I... I passed, and I and then I zigzagged it, did it backwards, flipped around, did it like Michael Jackson. Like, cops, cops fucking, just like you, because of your situation, Nick goes through it. He knows it more than I do. <laughs> My size. It's Nick's size. Like, he'll be 50 feet away. I'll be creating a scene, and they'll, they, they'll let me freak out and do whatever, but they'll be like, you, get on the fucking ground. Get on the fucking ground, you know. Fucked up, and we tried to support the police, but now. No, I, I still, I still support Blue Brother. And, and we do. We have, we have a lot of friends that are cops, but our system is not. And I'm from Colorado. My sister's back there again, but they're in a small town where you get arrested, and the sheriff or the chief lets you call home, and they let you call in, and. You know, you don't get that, and everything you went through. I mean, like Nick said, when we first saw your story, Nick was like, fuck him. And I told him, I said, I said, baby, like, I sat up night after night losing sleep watching all your stuff, and I was like, baby, like, he's innocent. And the worst thing that I've ever done is prove people innocent that have been put to death. Like, it haunts me. Just so you know, I am a firm believer in what's right is right. I got no, a question right for you. Right. We support you. Know what I mean? Before we they caught Joseph you. Lopez, before they caught Joseph Lopez with what you had seen, just what they had let you see, would you have beat me up or called the cops if you saw me walking down the street? That doesn't happen here. It's well, that, that, that's what happened to me. Listen, man, I, I don't know. I don't know. And because like I, said, I've seen like, I respect your I'm honesty. I'm the one creating a scene. I will be freaking out, and they have gone after Nick because of his size or because of what he looks like. It's it's totally profiling. Like I could be with you, 
freaking out, no, have, gun, have, have will, guns in my hand, or doing something shitty, and they would come after you. Because I'm, I'm pretty. Because I'm pretty, they let me go. But because you guys have beards, and you look more suspect, they come after you. It is a lot about the looks, but also you yeah. got to consider, you know, you got shows on TV, and that's where most people get their educations is from watching NCIS, right. which is bullshit, right. and Tell watching me. Sons of Anarchy, which is fucking bullshit, right. and then they start being afraid of people with beards, people who are bikers, but then again, I know bikers who uh, make them Sons of Anarchy boys look like Boy Scouts, so oh, exactly. there's that. Exactly, we, we've been in with two biker clubs and just... Just yet, or what, what was it? Yeah, two days ago, they did the prison run down here, and all our friends on motorcycles came by. And you know, I'm talking to my boy in prison. His mom was here. He called, and you know, it's like you're you're a look. They just at, everywhere. I mean, here we get a lot of like, oh, Mexican profiling. Most of our friends are Mexican. You know, like we're. We're right on the border of Mexico, so we get all this shit, and, I mean, we don't, I mean, they do, but then, I'm not kidding, Sean, Nick's just like you, like, he, he is the kindest, most sweethearted man, and I think that's what kind of made me latch on to you, is that I watched what you went through, and I've seen Nick go through it, and Nick is like a fucking totally innocent, loving person that will do anything for anyone, just like you. But yeah, you guys are the ones because of your looks that get prosecuted and then and and profiled the most. Where I'm over here, I'm a psycho crazy bitch who you should be coming after. But I'm a, a blonde with big boobs, so they look past me and they go straight for him. I mean his one DUI he did not deserve. If, if you he, beat on he, him, he blew below the limit, but because of certain stupid shit of Arizona, sure, yeah, I tried to create a scene so I would go to jail, not him. And they just anything we do, yeah. they go right after uh, him, just like they do you. Like we've lived that forever. I can be in the middle of a fucking park, holding a gun, freaking out. And Nick's sitting over there trying to calm me down, and they go after him because he's a bearded big man who looks threatening. Or because I'm a big boob blonde, I, oh, let's forgive me, but let's go after the person who has a better heart than me and is not doing anything. Nobody else but her. Well, in that case, it, it it's very lucky of both of you to have each other because having another exactly. witness there, that's important. When I say I need somebody in person, I mean it. They assumed I was guilty, and they did a lot of messed up stuff. This is, this is where Sir stands. This is where I stand. This is where our best friends stand, man. Like, you are who you say you are. You don't pretend to be anybody else, and you show respect to the friends that you have. And, and the people... And loyalty. And, and that's, that's all anybody in. here in our world. And then you have our utmost respect, and we will do anything That's in our lives to protect you and to be there for you. Because I don't care how low or how high you are, like, you are a genuine person. And like I said, Nick fully admitted when he first saw the story, he was like, oh my God, fuck him. And I said, and I was like, I honey, do not. Like, get away. Like, I'm, dude, honestly, I'm a real man, dude. Like, I'll tell you, when, when all this shit started going down and my wife started talking to you, I was like, get the fuck as far away from this dude as you can. And then like, I, I came don't to him, like it. I don't came like to him it. with the evidence and the things that I knew way prior, way prior to everything. And he turned around and said, okay. You've made your point. You are absolutely correct, and I support Sean. He went from being just like everybody else. Oh, I read something on the internet. It must be true. But then, so, honestly, but at the same time, I don't know you. You don't know me. You know what I mean? Like it's it's still like yeah. Listen, you you've spoken to my wife a lot more than you've talked to me. Absolutely, yes, sir. I don't know you. So I'm, I still have my guard up, my friend. I'm going to tell you that. 
You're supposed to. I'm going to. You're absolutely supposed to. That's your family, bud. But, you know what? You know what works with me and Sarah is I trust my wife. I trust my wife with my life, dude. I trust her with my children. And she is, she is, she is my queen, dude. Like, I, there's nothing in the world I want to do with for her. And, and if she trusts somebody, that holds weight with me. And that's, so, so don't prove me wrong. Is what I'm trying to say, I guess. He won't. He'll prove like you, you, you prove can't be right. He will prove me right. You can't be in your righteous self, my friend. And I will have you back through everything. Don't prove me. Don't prove my wife wrong. He won't. Is what I'm saying. Well, let me tell you what I'm I'm doing right now. Because of this jurisdiction stuff. Now there is stuff that the Bollingers have legitimate complaints about, like uh, the jurisdiction thing. I have had problems since I left your since I left Virginia with the jurisdiction thing. Natalie had problems with the jurisdiction thing. These cops eventually twisted and broke the rules to help her out. But the thing is, it's all this jurisdiction crap where people who are actual predators can get away with it by doing exactly what I'm doing now. So although I'm not willing to actually go out and hurt people, I am trying to get it so that what I'm doing now can't be done by actual predators. But it also is something where it has to be shown that they're predators. You know, railroading somebody like they did to me and refusing to allow evidence in court and refusing to look at evidence. And, like, the worst people out of all of this were my attorneys. Well, and when it, his phone was taken, his computer was taken. But also another thing. Okay, on top of while he was out, even before this, during, and after, like I told you, my, and my, like I said, my family lives there. Colorado, they take their blanket. They take those things that they need. So today, you're in Washington now, right? Three days before Natalie died? Yeah, I'm in Washington State. Three days before Natalie died, on Christmas, my friend Benji, he froze to death. The night before, I had predicted that somebody that I know would probably be found frozen to death in Boulder because they would rather they weather the night blanket. than have a blanket and get all of that expensiveness. And yes, they do go take it. No. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, go to San Francisco, the most fucking expensive place in the world. But they do. They're homeless. Yeah. But Sean has gotten in trouble for for giving homeless people blankets. Like if you and I walked along and gave blankets, we would get in trouble. They take them away from them. Okay. Okay. So hey. So you yeah, If you get busted, what? Very serious conversation with you. Go right ahead. Because I, I do want to ask a question over you, and I, I am sure I am going to get a very valuable lesson out of the question I'm about to ask you, but I need to know just, just, just for me. Yeah. I, I feel like your attitude towards society is absolute non-conformance, man. And I feel like that puts you at a disadvantage and puts you where you are a lot of the time. What is your struggle with bettering yourself and doing, doing uh -huh. like joining in? And I may be out of line, man. Well, if I line. am out of line, no. you tell me I'm out no, of line. No, you're out of line. I well, there's, I there's a... a everything I've seen and everything I've heard is, is going at society and I understand there is conviction there man I understand the conviction and I do understand fighting for the wrong and fighting for the fighting for what your convictions are I understand that but what but at what point does that at what point and how much have you lost everything I lost over 300 friends in 10 years I, of homelessness. I understand that, but, what, but you're what's not... the means to the end, I guess, is my question. Like, at what point do you finally say, like, at what point do you finally say, all right, man, like, this, this is fucking no. enough, dude? 
Or do you just always or do you just always take it on the chin and live a fucking live in the shit, dude? You know what? Like that's my question. The thing is, with me, I've worked with so many people that I've ever worked for. Do what? And join the fight and and live like you do, but I'm not willing to do that, man. Like that's that's my question. That's the point. Is the most people have the assumption that I want to live like this. No, since since I left Virginia, everything that I have busted my ass for has been taken from me. And during my life, because I'm different, people make assumptions about me, and I can't change those assumptions. But right. they can punish me for those assumptions. What I'm saying is what? that I'm tired no, of the punishment. Yeah, that's uh, what like, I'm asking the question? Okay. To, to this day, I'm, I'm still being punished for the things that I did not do. I should not have had to defend myself that way. I mean, I, I literally... By the people you love the most in your life. I understand. I understand. No, I know. You're, you're coming off long no, and strong. I, I don't mean to be, dude. Please, well, let's say somebody please, shot no, Sarah no, in the I, head, I, 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 and no, then you got blamed with killing her. And I don't try to... That's... Well, that's the whole thing that you can't just put into a small conversation. You have to spend time with him to know that. I'm trying to figure... I get it. I That's can't what I'm trying to figure out. But you can't hop into a question loaded like that without knowing the backstory because Sean has been through a lot. I, and I know. You told me a lot. Okay. You told me a Sorry, lot. Sean, go so ahead. I just, I'm I sorry. Just, go ahead and, go ahead and answer that. If you know right. Sarah, do you feel it, like he's offensive? Yeah, if I'm I also know that you can, but he can handle offensive. Yeah. Oh, I'm a shit talking really son of a bitch. Really it's all good. I'm trying to kind of figure you out a little bit. And I, if, if honestly, if I'm offensive, please let me know. If I cross a line, please let me know. Like, that is not my intention at all. I want to know who you are. Dude, Honesty you know I mean? is not offensive. And the questions that you ask, they're very important for you to ask them. They they don't just help you. They help me because I get to hear through your questions what your bias are, what your assumptions are, what it is that you are allowed to see. Like a lot of the stuff that she was able to show you, the rest of the world didn't get to see. They weren't on my friends list. They I, I had to make it all private because of uh, internet wingnuts that were helping out the Bollingers trying to destroy my voice and destroy my Facebook. But that's the thing, is that my best friend in the whole world, I hadn't gotten to talk to her for a whole year because of things that I didn't do. Things that she could have corrected, but she was embarrassed. You know, she she was trying to be clean up there. She was trying to not get in trouble for heroin, and her mom found her heroin. You know, I mean, what they did in Virginia, I understand why they did it, you know. I mean, I was young once, too, but it's also the fact that they were adults. They did invite me. I went to visit them because Natalie was going to kill herself. I drove 1,700 miles there, and I drove 1,700 miles away when they were scared of me. And they shouldn't have been scared of me. You know, people were trying to find my arrest record in Virginia. There wasn't an arrest record because I wasn't arrested. It's not against the law to be dehydrated or stuck in the road. And that's literally how it was. It said to make a U-turn. I tried making a U-turn right there where it said to because I was going to Natalie's house, you know. And when I went to make that U-turn, I got stuck in between two road cones. And they're doing road construction there. And the reason I'm stuck is because when I, the car that I got, um, I got it from David and Laura Nelson. And the steering column, it it slips. It stops catching the gears. I didn't know what was wrong with my car because I hadn't slept in days having a severe panic attack. Like, I literally set it up so that I, I had a safety network when I got there. And my whole safety network fell apart before I ever got there. But I didn't want Natalie to kill herself. So nobody, I pushed through it. Wants anybody to do that, man. Exactly. And, and I'll give you a little dive into my life, man. Like, uh, Listen, all right, mama told me I gotta listen, so I'm gonna let you spell it. Yes, sir. If, uh, if you, let's say Sarah's family, they didn't like you 
and say she loved you, but like for me, I didn't have a sexual relationship with Natalie, so it is different because I'm not into that stuff. The girls that I grew up with suffered most of the most severe abuse you can endure, and so did I. So, like for me, that's out of the question. That's not something I I visualize or worry about. For me, it's the fact that she was my best friend, and because of her family's opinion, she wasn't allowed to be my friend. But also, because of what her twin sister said, and mind you, I know them from Boulder, Colorado, because of what her twin sister had said to Maddie Boa, who's a ex-girlfriend of hers, um, not an ex-girlfriend, they didn't date, they just fooled around, but she had said that I, I threatened their family, and I didn't. They felt threatened, and that's a, a really big difference. And over time, I mean, it, it took maybe two to three weeks at most from when I got to Boulder, it first started off, you know, in the first couple of uh, hours of being there, me being told that I was a stalker. And within three weeks, I was hearing that I was a rapist and a child molester and I have to leave and all this, that, and the other. And I did this to this little girl and that little girl. And I'm like, hey, first of all, she was 18. And second of all, I went through all of that hell to get there to see her, to go do all of the things that she wanted to do because I didn't want her to kill herself. And after I left, everybody treating me like that, it got to the point where they were physically assaulting me. I couldn't see my loved ones. I was constantly on the move and it was messed up. You know, I did everything that I could short of exposing. I, I went to the police, literally. I went and a homeless person doesn't go to the police because homeless people are wrecked by the police. Sean. Yeah. Hey, dude, honestly, I think you're a good dude, man. I think you're a good dude. No, but I am because because this is this is the past, man. Like, I want to know, like, what I'm when I ask questions, man. I'm I'm asking questions about you. I, I don't I don't. It, dude, that stuff is in the past, man, and and I feel like you worked through it, and I feel like my it, wife. My wife has helped you kind of work through that stuff, and I understand that it still weighs a lot. I I have seven warrants out over a girl I didn't kill. I have seven warrants out for my arrest over a girl I didn't kill. What I'm saying is that I can't let it go because I still have seven warrants out for my arrest over a girl I did not kill. That's, that's horseshit, dude. It's that's not horseshit. horseshit. This whole situation, people would not stop punishing me and keeping me in an area where I was punished and sending me to a different jurisdiction. Literally, every issue that I had since Natalie died was over me trying to make the police take a fucking report. They oh, wanted so to assume my I guilt like most know, people did. I went through in that group when I spoke up. From, imagine being him and himself. I, like, literally. I imagine people with the mentality of those people in those groups, but they're, they're hitting you in person. person. But I am sorry. But imagine being in that position. Sean, Sean, I, I apologize. I do, I do. And seriously, it it's still, social media it and still stinks. Like, I, I don't Facebook this because of the drama and the bullshit that's on there. I just, I don't do it. I have enough within my four walls that people hold up. I hate Facebook, it. but it's the Stupid only consistent way to meet with people these people. Don't fucking matter. The next Have step from you, you know I because, I mean? because we, so, I mean, Why? Nick has Nick has endured and suffered unfortunate losses, a brother and sister. But he's also he also has a married family. His parents are still together. They're perfect and they're amazing. Oh no, I had a it's the first time. start when you no, are in the system you age out at 18 and that's the end of the story my biggest question to you and and listen i'm gonna call you my friend because i i have no reason not to but listen my friend like like how do you see getting out of this and how do you see what are you gonna do he doesn't to know. fix this and what are you gonna do to 
Why like should that. he have to know? Because he, he never should have been put there. Now. Because it's a horseshoe place that you've been put in, but you have to have a plan to get out of it. And that that's called, that's what this life is, dude, is, listen, I get it. We don't have a plan out of my shit, so I should No, hey, listen, I understand. Um... I'm not trying to get out of it. I would go to prison happily for the rest of my life if it got these laws changed. And I mean that. If we could make it so the predators could be pursued across jurisdiction, even if they wear a badge, and force them to wear a body cam, we want good cops on the force. We want officers who are going to do the job. It's worth the rest of my life in prison to see that happen. No, it is not. And I love Alicia, no, it and it is I, worth I, I, the rest I, I, of my life in prison for her to never they, have to pretend she's scared of me that. again. And for you to be willing to take a rap to try and open people's eyes is, is a is horrible, yeah. horrible, horrible, horrible travesty on life, man. Like, well, that's the thing. Honestly, that's plan B, because plan A has always been to try to get a lawyer and an advocate, because that's what I should have had to begin with. I should have had an advocate at 18. I mean, I, because of my Tourette syndrome and my ADHD and social anxiety disorder and stuff like that, like, as far as Asperger's went, they wanted to diagnose me as autistic when I was a kid, but I saw how the autistic kids got treated, and I wasn't going to have that. So I learned how to be as normal as I, I could anyway. But with the Tourette's thing, that's something that's commonly associated with Asperger's, or with autism in general, and all of the stuff that I was diagnosed with that is often linked with um, autism, they just never made the connection in a lot of places. And in a lot of the other places, I was able to talk them out of it. But by the time I was 17, it was pretty apparent that I, I needed to go in and get diagnosed. So I went in, they told me I should come back when I was 18, because when I was 18, um, I was going to have to redo it again anyway. So when I was 18, I aged out of the system. And the number one people in number one cross section of both the homeless and prison populations is people who grew up in the system and aged out of it. We don't have parental support. We don't have that good start. And immediately we start getting the punishment of what happens when you don't have the roof and don't have the money. A lot of the stuff you do under the privacy of your own house is illegal outside. Like that peeing thing. Imagine if you were stuck outside, they locked up all of the bathrooms and you had to pee because it's cold and cold makes you need to pee. So then you're what? A registered sex offender because you had to pee? They prevented you from using the bathroom. I have never seen a dog have to register for urinating on the fucking lawn. Right. Now, and don't I, get me wrong. If you're exposing there, yourself to kids, that's a different story. In the park, there was a park nearby. But for them to come at me like that, and had I, had I not held my ground, I would be a registered sex offender right now. That was happening. I was going to kick the shit out of that guy. But... Yeah. But well, see, I wouldn't have. I'd have just taken it. the like, abuse. Time, like you, you, like I'm serious, Sean. You should see if there, if they, he could be, he could be on the other side of the property, and I'm freaking out, and I'm causing a scene, but they go after him, just like they do you. They see you. Oh, what do you do? Why are you pulled over? Why are you doing this? Oh, oh, you look a little scary. You have a beard, and and it's just who you are. So let me question you and let me put you through all this shit and explain yourself when really it's like, I'm doing your fucking job. I'm helping someone who's face down in snow that you should be concerned about, but you're more concerned about me helping them than you are what's going on with them. It's a sad, sad world. Yeah, but... I'm not a victim to anything. I have been, just like all the women you talk to, they can tell you, I've been... I've been brutalized. I have been absolutely brutalized. I worked my ass off to become a police officer, to become a homicide detective, just to get taken away from that because my family said that's not what they wanted. And then to get on the other side of it, where now I went from being like so above the law to now like I was in trouble one time and anything I do, 
they treat me like fucking shit. Like when that bitch broke into my house and pointed my own gun at my head, they treated me like such shit. Now, I, for the first time in my life, have money. You don't. But I've been on the side of no money. And fortunately now, I can protect myself because I have money. But that's a fucking sad thing. And that's the difference between you and I is there's no difference. You and I will rescue anybody. You and I will do anything for anybody. But I will go to jail for maybe three to 24 hours for you will go for a week. Because I fucking finally have money and you don't. And you are profiled. I am pretty. They don't want to arrest me. You have a beard and you look scary. So they are automatically going to arrest you. Like if you and I were side by side doing the same exact thing together. We're pulling Jerry out of the snow. I won't go to jail, but you will. Why? Because I'm pretty. And because I can talk. But you won't say a word. You'll be completely innocent, but you'll be the one to go down. And that's not fucking fair. At all. Well, that, that's the, the thing is that a lot of people think that I'm perpetuating this. And I'm, I'm screaming out for help. The abuse hasn't stopped. I don't get to see my loved ones. All of the people that I love the most either died or left after Natalie died. Right. And the things that, like, because I was, because of how I grew up and how I feel about single parents, not just single mothers, but also single fathers, and I needed a hero growing up to keep me from getting beaten up for the color of my but skin or from being one. raped. You were your own hero. Exactly. Well, back then I, I couldn't be, not till I was about 12. When I was 12, I really started getting into my own and, and fighting back and defending myself. But prior to that, I mean, yeah, they did whatever they wanted to me. Whatever they wanted. So as an adult, I decided that I was going to I was gonna be the superhero that I needed growing up. And I was going to speak up like people should have spoke up for me. Like my mom and dad should have spoke up for me when I was a kid, you know, and didn't. I was going to be that person as an adult. And as an adult, I realized that they were doing this to homeless people and those homeless people many of them, because I was in the system in Colorado, many of those people out on the streets are people that I was in the system with. And like Nick is in, he's not heartless, he's not unkind, he has, he has the biggest, hardest, hardest, big hardest person I know, hardest, that's not even word, but he did lose a brother and he did lose a sister and he endured a lot. We grew up in the same neighborhoods, but my dad was a scam artist like I didn't have an ugly life on the outside we lived in the same neighborhood where his parents were rich and my dad was a scam artist not always and they worked really hard and 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 they made their way because they they had they they won a lawsuit because his brother was medically yeah no they did I'm not saying they didn't work hard or nothing like that but that's not the thing See, that's the Jepsons. The Jepsons in Chapel, they're the local handymen. They do the plumbing, they do the sprinklers, they, they can build you a whole house between all of them. But they're a, a tight-knit family, and they work together, and they stay together, and that's why they're able to to accumulate the what they've been able to accumulate, is because they work together. They're not fighting against each other. They're not going, all right, well, Dana, you go over there and... You do your job, and you maintain your house, and that's how you do it. No, they literally do it like a bunch of Mexicans. The Mexicans well, do it right. They come our, up, they work together as a family, they start from the top and work their way down. They work together to make it happen, and because of that, all of them pooling their resources together to get the first, the oldest person a vehicle, that oldest person then pays that respect back by driving all these people to work. And three months later, they're able to earn, between seven of them, they're able to earn enough money to buy another brand new vehicle. And eventually, they all haven't paid off. They haven't paid five times as much as that vehicle's worth in interest because they paid it in cash. And that's what family is capable of doing. 
But when it's just you, like, especially when you're disabled, when you're getting 705 bucks a month and you have to live on that and the courts are eating up $600 of that every single month just to postpone it and postpone it and postpone it, and you have to do all of this traveling. I mean, it, it was eight different police agencies in five different counties in Colorado before I ever got arrested. I mean, that's, you know a lot of officers who are involved in that. And no, Colorado I, is like that. They're 50th in the nation as far as mental health care goes. Oh, Arizona is like, like 50 fucking spur. You know, like we have, we have nothing. Like I, we have a very good friend who is a three-time Purple Heart, five-touring veteran. He has missing fingers. Um, pretty much every week, you can just say, is the anniversary of one of his friend's deaths. He lives in this small town about an hour from us. And on Veterans Day, he's at a bar. And, you know, you know everybody knows everybody. It's like a Silverton or, yeah, it's like a Silverton, Colorado thing. Everybody knows everybody. It's Veterans Day, he's at the bar, and, and a Indian gets cut off. For drinking, he's being inappropriate and doing whatever, comes back in and kills a bunch of people. And my friend, who's a, who was the armor ranger sniper, is on the back patio smoking, goes in, tries to save them and all that shit. Anytime he has his PTSD, he comes down here, he stays with us. But I just don't know. I relate to your PSD more than I do his PSD, but we take him in, and we love him, and I watched him on my couch, like one day he was <clears throat> laying there sleeping, I mean he hadn't slept in days, and he finally comes, this is his other home, he comes home and he's laying there, and I watch him have his nightmares, and I'm on my phone, and he goes, everybody get down, and he pops up, and I my phone went flying, and I started laughing, and I thought, oh, fuck, oh, my God. It's a thing I do. I laugh when I get hurt or other people get hurt. It's not that I'm happy that other people are get, getting hurt. It's a syndrome. It's a reaction. Yeah, it is. And when Nick saw it the other day, when I slept, when the fucking ceiling sunk in <laughs> from the rain, and I slept and broke my shit, and I was really crying, like, and my mind was saying, like, I'm crying, help me, but I was laughing hysterically. I'm like... He has a syndrome. It's just we all have our we all have our, our we all have our own form and and I went through a lot in my life. You went through a lot in your life. I know people that you know. Maybe it's what your family put you through. Maybe it's what a friend put you through. Maybe it's what the war put you through. But we all just get together and we love each other. And it's unconditional. And you might have your freak out. And you might do this or that. Well, it's finding the people that will accept. Like, I have a hard time because I do. I I, I finally start to use Xanax. And I finally start drinking for the first time in my life. And I'm learning that those don't mix. So I've said things that I don't mean while I'm drinking. But the people that love me... <laughs> don't judge me on that and people that that are assholes take that and use that against me it's like you it's like the people like nobody should ever go hey you ran it out on your facebook or hey you did this or that we don't oh oh we can't be your friend anymore or you you know the people that that care and that love you will watch you they will be there they will watch your demons come out and they will fucking wrestle them for you and nobody does that for you well i do i do have people who do that for me but the thing is that they're in colorado and in colorado i'm punished and those who help me are punished and those who speak out are punished i got so many friends who were on facebook banned for sticking up for me who had well, their lives Sean, and their I'm families threatened too, and i don't speak out like i should because I am limited to the county that I live in. Unfortunately, I made a mistake six years ago with the DUI, and 
I didn't pay my dues on it, which I normally would have. So I watch my P's and Q's because I'm not, I am supposed to do 30 days in jail and I can't do that. I'm a mom of, but you come in my house and you spend one day, even my daughter was like, well, you can't do Like, how the fuck are you going to go do that? I can't do it. It's not that I can't physically, it's that I can't emotionally. Like, I can't leave everybody behind for a month. Like, and do I deserve a month? Fuck no, I never, I went from being a cop to being fucking, the first time I ever got in trouble, being offered 45 days in jail and it being pled down to 30 for two beers. Two fucking beers. I can have 12 beers. And walk a straight fucking line. I would never drink and drive. Ever. But I got crucified just like you did. And so now they search me out. And I know I have a lot of cop friends in every county. But I don't leave. Everybody gives me shit because I, I don't leave my house. But why should I? I have my horses. I have my kids. I'm in another county. And my husband. My friends can come here. So you have everything that I need in order to not continue to have a meltdown. Like when, when you need that rest, you can get it because of, of where you're at and because you have your loved ones there where you can see them and you can feel but them. But Sean, also, also, you see my posts every day. Like, I'm hated. I don't see me as pretty. I don't see me as beautiful. But I... I just recently destroyed my life with a bunch of people around me because a woman who is 20 years my age sees me as a threat, and she did admit, she said, not only are you beautiful on the inside, but you're beautiful on the outside, and she hates me for it. So she made me look to be this horrible person, which in fact was her, which thankfully one of my neighbors, my sober neighbors, saw her. And saw what she did, but she said everything, she took everything that she did to me and said I did it to her. So now I'm, I'm, I live in my little world out here in the middle of nowhere. I love my people. But then they started judging me because they thought I did this and that when in fact I did the opposite. If you ever see me. You were shamed for being pretty and for being kind. And, you know, I want you to know that that's something that's terrible to do to another human being, and it's not okay. I also want you to know I did do that to Natalie. I did shame her for being pretty because she didn't understand people will do evil shit. Men who are evil and predatory will do evil shit if you're pretty. And she exactly. just didn't understand that. And I begged her for pretty, help. But on the inside, I know that I'm beautiful. Like, on the inside... I am funny, I am understanding, unless you fuck with children or you're a rapist, then, you know, whatever you fucking do on your own Exactly, time but now imagine time. if, I don't judge if, if, other if than you're a woman and being falsely accused of that. But, because I, I am, like, I, I make everybody laugh and I joke around, you know, and I do that. I don't see my exterior. I know I'm not ugly, but I know I don't think I'm beautiful. But I get fucking hated on because of the fact that, like, someone like you, like, like, like my friend, I tried to say, well, I'm trying to explain, and they're like, how the fuck could you get yourself involved in that? And I'm like, how the fuck could I not? Are you kidding me? Right? I can't see suffering and do nothing. Exactly. When I did, I and, and my past is whatever, I'm not ashamed of it. I went through a, a hell of a lot of shit, and instead of being a girl that's like, oh, that that's going to make me do, do drugs or do this or that, I'm like, I'm a fucking badass because I survived that and, and then some, you know? Like, I, I knew the day that my rapist got out of fucking jail. Nick's always wanted to kill him. Nick could find him and fuck him up, but I, I, we don't do that. That's not us. I use that as that I wouldn't be who I am today if not for that. Now I'm not, I'm not happy that it happened, but I don't use that as a weakness. I use that as a strength. 
man. But you also did the right so thing and made made me, sure that, that you followed through, me, and he got. They want me to. That they want you know when I when I come when I when I enter a room, I'm never ever threatening. You know, the night that everything went down, my other friends are like, all you did was tell me, you know, I didn't drink. I didn't, I didn't do nothing for a long time. I finally can drink because I'm with a person who I can, like, let myself go and I can in, enjoy myself. I don't do anything wrong. If I was around you, I would, I would tell you how much I love you and what you mean to me and how beautiful you are to me. And that's what I do to everybody else. But the people that find me threatening, they make it um, like a vendetta against me. And they, and I do, I bury my secrets. I bury my anger. I bury the things that people put me through. When I'm in a room and I'm constantly put down time after time, I don't say anything, but there's no gray area with me. So when I do, when I do go, I go. Well, and I, go I, mean, I, I, I want I go you dark. to... I want you to know that the first time that anybody ever called me a rapist was after I left Virginia, and it was over somebody I didn't rape. Even Natalie said that we didn't have a sexual relationship, and the only one that I had access to do that to was Alicia, and I wouldn't have done that. It was us talking at her request on her cigarette breaks at work. You know, she'd call me and tell me when she was having a cigarette. You know, I spent a good couple days losing sleep and like Nick said his automatic reaction I don't know it came across my Facebook Natalie's post and Nick's different than I like I said I my my goal in life was to be a homicide detective I I I worked really hard to get where I was and Nick said no I can't I basically had to choose like the man of my dreams and my children versus everything I ever thought I wanted in life, and I gave it up, and I have no resentment, but I am really, really fucking good at what I do, and I sat there, and Nick will be like, what are you doing? I'm on day three of, like, no sleep, and I'm proving a person who's on death row innocent, and his automatic reaction, I, I do like, want to hear this, this guy. like, I, oh my god. I do and want I to hear sat, this, but said, I've been freezing no, for the last right 20 that, minutes, John, and if I turn on my car, I can't hear rant. you. I said, it's not him. He didn't do it, and I stand beside him, and Nick trusts everything that I am. So I spent like three days listening. I put my earphones in, and I sat up night after night listening to your stuff, and I went to Nick, and I said, he's absolutely innocent. Has nothing to do with it. And then I joined these Facebook groups and I sat quietly until there was a certain point where they crossed the line and they were saying things about you. I watched all these things being said about you and I couldn't control it any longer. And I knew I knew better because Sarah, I, I, I have to cut you off right now. I've been freezing for the last 20 minutes. Can I turn on my car for five minutes and then call you back? Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm very cold. I need to put Nick to bed anyway. Yes, ma'am. I just want you to know, honey, that, that I support you. I know my words, just like everybody else's, are pretty words, but I'm here for you, and I'm dead on it. And I'm so proud of who you are and what you do. And I don't need sympathy. You don't need sympathy. You're strong. I just want you to know, you know, sometimes 